Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about facing aluminum on a CNC router. My Avid Pro 4848 is very good at cutting aluminum, but I've had some challenges actually doing facing of large pieces. And so I actually reached out to Daytron and ended up getting one of their um, really nice two flute end mills, and that was actually the right way to go. So. Let's talk about tooling and what is necessary to get a good surface finish when you're facing aluminum on something like a CNC router. So why is facing really that different than like a contour or a pocket or something like that on a CNC router? Well, a CNC router, just based on the sheer size of it and the design of it, has this inherent weakness, which is a little bit more flexibility and play in the Z-axis itself because of this gantry. A traditional milling machine has a head that is, you know, mounted to a column and is just a lot more rigid, and so therefore, something like a facing operation that relies on z-axis stability is going to suffer a little bit on a machine like this and in my tramming video i did show you know the inherent movement of the head and all that stuff so first step is for facing you need to make sure that your head is as trammed as you can get it it needs to be as flat and parallel Otherwise, you're going to get all these stair steps. So that's kind of first step. The second step is choosing the right tooling that works with the advantages of the CNC router and tries to minimize some of the disadvantages. So let's take a closer look at the tooling. The biggest advantage to a CNC router is speed, not only the RPM spindle speed, but also the travel speed. For instance, on a machine like this, um, I can easily do 500 inches per minute, whereas something like the Tormach Max is out of around 100 and 120 inches per minute. That's just as fast as it can travel, period. And on the spindle for something like this, we can do 24,000 RPM versus the 10,000. So the advantage of this is cutting very quickly but because of the light, the lack of rigidity, we're taking a lot lighter cuts. So therefore, small end mills tend to be preferred because you can take a very small width of cut, but you can take that cut very quickly, make up for the smaller chip by just cutting a lot more chips much more quickly. So if we look at traditional end mills like these two guys, I have a single flute and a double flute, the problem with facing with something like this is you have to take a lot of little passes because I typically only do about 25 thou width of cut, somewhere around there. And so if you think about that, that would just literally be hundreds of passes. Granted, we're traveling very quickly, but it takes a lot to surface something like this. In addition, with a facing pass, you're typically only doing a very light cut, maybe only 10 thou worth of depth. And so you're really only using the very tip of that cutting surface. And this puts a lot of excess wear on something like this because that tip is very small and relatively fragile. And if that's the only cutting surface you're using, it's gonna wear out over time. And you're also gonna get some deflection. It's just not the most ideal thing. So then we look at something like this, which is a spoil board cutter. And this is what I use to surface off the MDF bed on this machine. This is a white side 6220. This works fantastic with MDF, but the cutting geometry just isn't set up for aluminum. In addition to that, this is also rated for only 8,000 RPM. So we're kind of losing the advantage of doing high speed aluminum cutting, by only maxing this out at 8,000 RPM, which is the slowest that this machine can run. Not to mention there's really poor chip evacuation. You have kind of this flat um, cutting surface. And relatively speaking, these are extremely dull. For cutting aluminum, you want the sharpest thing possible. And that's why I avoid touching the tip of this and less so this. These are extremely sharp and will cut you just by touching. So that leaves us with, I think, the optimal solution, which is this end mill from Daytron. This is a, what is an 06, let me read this, 
0068444 is a 20 millimeter end mill and you can see it has a slightly different profile than the others. It has a very flat cutting surface or I guess a chunkier cutting surface than these. So it's made for those lateral loads, which is exactly what we're going for. The larger width allows us to cut more material at once. And these things are rated, I think, up to like 60,000 RPM and it's solid carbide. So this is a nice solution because it kind of um, works with all of the benefits of the CNC router. Okay, so let's do some cutting with this. I've got a block of aluminum mounted in here. I think the first cut is just gonna be kind of, well, facing this off. Um, we'll go from there. Um, I am going to be using the dust boot because this just produces an unholy amount of chips. I mean, it will go 10, 15 feet in the radius all around the mill. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to do that. But I actually put this down as far as I can. So eh, maybe we'll see something, but probably not. I've also got the fog buster hooked up. Um, I am running um, a little bit of compressed air and a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on there, which is exactly what Daytron uses. And um, yeah, I will put the feeds and speeds at the bottom on the video. So let's see this thing cut. So here's what the first cut went like, went okay. Um, we need to lower this down a little bit because um, we just barely scratch on the surface there. So let me make some tweaks to the code and um, I'll export and we'll go again. Okay, so let's ramp this thing up. I increased the RPM, increased the feed rate and increased the depth of cut. So let's see what this thing can really do. So that time the machine actually sounded like it was doing something. So that sounded a lot nicer and the surface finish is getting better. It's still not perfect, but really decent. And you can't really feel the lines, which is the thing that I was really um, worried about. Um, you can't feel the overlaps, which is fantastic. So that's what the surface finish looks like. Um, let's keep ramping this thing up. All right, I think this is the final cut for pushing it. Um, increased the spindle RPM to the max of 24,000 RPM. The feed rate is 250 inch per minute, um, which is pretty darn fast. And then I'm keeping the depth of cut the same at 25 thou, but increasing the width of cut to 3 8 or 0.375. So, oh, let's see how that goes. that look at that that is really pretty that is so very pretty um, I am really impressed I know I said that was the last one but I think we could do a lot more with this let's just um, let me play around with this let's keep ramping this 
Okay, I think this is the final thing that I'm going to test. Um, I can't really increase the spindle, so I'm gonna increase the feed rate to about 312, which is just 25% higher than it was before. And I'm gonna increase the depth of cut to a whopping 0.1 inch or 100 thou. So let's see what happens. Well, that was interesting. Um, I'm gonna get a close up on these chips here in a second. Um, here is what the finish looks like. And I think we found the limits um, to what we can do. The spindle was a tiny bit bogged down, but I can tell you that I can definitely feel the transitions here. And over here you can see there's definitely a line and you can kind of almost catch your fingernail on that. So this is really just a limit to the rigidity of the machine. Um, we hit the limits to which it can hold. The spindle was fine, but we just had you know too much flex in the Z. So let's take a closer look at these chips though. So here's a close up of the chips. This is a mechanical pencil just to kind of give you an idea, a sense of scale. But these are really nice little curls. Um, if you need to really remove some material quickly, I think this could be a good method. Um, if I was doing this over and using this for real, I would probably lower the width of cut down to something a little bit more reasonable, but the depth of cut really didn't seem to be much of an issue. And finally, one last cut, I promise. I'm just gonna do a very light cut, um, very small width of cut, very small depth of cut, relatively slow and high um, spindle speed to see if I can get the best surface finish possible out of this. So let's see how that goes. Well, I would say out of all of them, this is the best feeling. This has the smoothest finish to them and has a pretty cool pattern as well. Um, everyone out here that's a machinist is gonna be looking at this and being like, well, there's your rigidity. Yeah, I mean, all of these swirls are basically an indication that um, this isn't perfectly rigid. So, you know, no surprise there. Um, but this is a nice finish. It feels good. It is flat. It's just, I don't think you're gonna avoid that on a machine like this. This is probably as good as you're gonna get. So this is the point in the video where I kind of give a wrap up and a summary and my final thoughts and conclusions. And my final thoughts and conclusions are, I am very happy with the Daytron end mill. It is exactly what I was looking at for this application. I have a couple of projects coming up where I need to surface off or face off some very large pieces of aluminum. And just using a traditional end mill was not going to happen. Um, if I wasn't clear in the very beginning of the video, I will say that Daytron did provide for me, i.e. give me this end mill for this um, test and this review. So thank you to Daytron and you know, just full disclosure on that. If you need more information about this, check the description down below. The model number and everything is down there. Um, it is a little bit spendy, I guess. It's about $160, which you know, for a facing end mill really isn't that out of line. Um, I think my Superfly is 250, something like that. It's really not that uncommon for something like this. For a normal end mill, yes, it is expensive, but for a facing end mill, eh, it's about in line. So use that information however you want. But I am just happy that I have a nice solution for facing off aluminum, and I'm very happy with the performance of the Avid CNC. This is about what I was expecting when I went into this, or rather, this is what I was hoping when I ended up buying this machine. Um, it really is good at aluminum. If it was just a little bit stiffer in some key areas, it would be just absolutely amazing. 
you can get that same kind of performance out of a gantry machine if you just kind of add two or three times or maybe even in some cases a zero on the end of the price tag. So given the price of this machine, given the size of it, I am overall very happy with its performance. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to me ramble on about cutting aluminum, all sorts of other things. Um, be sure to check out my Facebook page for any updates. Check out the links below down in the description and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.